All right, tomorrow we're going to start working with uh, standard form equations. So in order to do that, let's review how to get standard form from intercept form. So if I take my factors, x plus 7 and x plus 2, remember you put your x on top of the first box, your 7 on top of the second one. Then you take your second factor, x beside the first box and 2 beside the second one. And then what we do is we multiply, because actually what we're trying to do is distribute. So we would multiply x times x and x times 2. So if we multiply x times x, we get x squared. And if we multiply x times 2, we get 2x. And then we could distribute the 7. 7 times x and 7 times 2. 7 times x is 7x. And 7 times 2 is 14. So to write it in standard form, remember we want to combine our like terms, which were 7x and 2x. That would give me 9x. And we bring down our x squared in front. So it reads x squared plus 9x. And then bring over our 14 plus 14. Well, if you notice, 7 plus 2 is in the, the numbers are 7 and 2 in the uh, intercept form. And notice in our standard form, 7 plus 2 is 9. That gives me my middle term. And if we multiply 7 times 2, 7 times 2 is 14. And that will give me my constant term in standard form. So that is the relationship between uh, intercept form and standard form. So on the next slide, what we want to do is we want to be able to start with standard form and write that in intercept form. So this is a little bit different than what we did last time. So if we have... We put, what we're going to do is instead of writing our numbers on the outside of the boxes, we're going to take our x squared, and we know that that always comes in our first box. And we're going to take our 12, and that always comes in our last box. So we're going to put those there, and then we're going to see what can we multiply to get x squared, and what can we multiply to give us 12. So x times x is x squared. So I would put my x on top and x to the left. And we want to think of numbers that multiply to give us 12, but remember, they should also add to give you your middle term, 8. So the numbers that come to mind for me when it, I multiply to get 12 are 6 times 2. Now let's check to make sure it adds to give us our middle term. So when we fill our box, 6 times x is 6x, and 2 times x is 2x. And notice when we combine those, 6x plus 2x does equal 8x, which is my middle term here. All right, so my factors would be x plus 6 and x plus 2. So if we use the zero property like we did yesterday, we would set each of these factors x plus 6 equal to 0 because if it equals 0, that will give us a 0 or a solution. And x plus 2 equals 0, again, because if it equals 0. So if we subtract 6 from both sides, we get x equals negative 6. And on this case, if we subtract 2 from both sides, that's going to give me x equals negative 2. And what I asked you to do was check uh, graphing. And remember, you can use GeoGebra to graph. On the next slide is the same problem. I've just added the graph. So notice that my solutions in my graph are negative 6 and negative 2, which works from what we found. All right? So let's look at a different example. Let's say we have x squared minus 3x plus 2. So again, what I want to do is I want to have put my x squared in my first box because that's where it always goes when I'm multiplying and put my 2 in my last box because that's where it goes. And then we want to find out what multiplies to give me x squared and what multiplies to give me 2. So I know that x times x is x squared. And numbers that multiply to give me 2 are 2 times 1. So if I multiply and I get 2 times x is 2x and 1 times x is 1x and I combine those, I know I get 3x, but my middle term is negative 3x. So we can change that by making both the 2 and the 1 negative. So that gives me negative 1x and negative 2x. So when I add them, I get my negative 3x like the middle term is. So I know that my intercept forms are going to be x minus 2 times x minus 1. And to find my solutions, I set each one equal to 0 using the 0 property. If one of them equals 0, 
then it'll make the product zero. So I need to find out where x can equal zero, or where the x solution equals zero. So if I add two to both sides, that tells me x can equal two. And if I add one to both sides, that tells me x could equal one. And it would make the function equal to zero. Now if I check my graph, my intercept should be at two and one. Again, the next slide is just where I've shown the graph. All right, you don't have to write anything here. Notice my solutions are at positive one and positive two, just like I said they would be. Next example. Again, here I have it in standard form. It says x squared plus four x minus 12. So to find my factors, I'm gonna put x squared and I'm gonna put negative 12, that minus makes it negative. All right, I wanna find my numbers that multiply to give me x squared. So I know x times x is x squared. And I want numbers that multiply to give me 12, or negative 12. So I know 6 times 2 is 12. Now those aren't the only numbers that give us 12. We might have to change, but I think these will work. So if I want to get 4, I know this is going to give me 6x, and this is going to give me 2x. But remember, I want it to give me negative 12, so either the 2 or the 6 needs to be negative. And when I combine them, I want to get a positive 4x, so it's going to help if the 6 is positive and the 2 is negative. That way it'll make that negative 2x and that 6x. So when I combine them, I get positive 4x like the middle term. So my answer in intercept form would be x plus 6 times x minus 2. And to solve for my zeros, I would set each factor equal to 0. So x plus 6 equals 0. And I could say x minus 2 equals 0, because if either one of those is the case, it'll make the product 0. So to solve, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So it's going to give me x equals negative 6. And to solve here, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So that's going to give me x equals 2. And on the next slide, it's the same example. All I've done is added the graph. So let's look at the graph and make sure that my intercepts are at negative 6 and 2. So if I go over here, I check my intercepts, there's negative 6, there's positive 2, so I know I've done it correctly. Alright, here's my last example. Again, I have f of x equals 2x squared plus x minus 3. A little bit different. In the first box, I'm going to get 2x squared. In the last box, I'm going to get negative 3. All right, and this is where it becomes a little bit different because you got to think, numbers that multiply to give me 2x squared. That would have to be 2x times x would give me 2x squared. And then numbers that multiply to give me 3, or negative 3, would give me 3 times 1. And remember, if I want it to be negative, one of them needs to be negative. I know my middle term needs to be positive, so let's let our larger number be positive and our smaller number be negative. So that would give me... 3x, and that would give me negative 2x. So when I combine my like terms, that would give me positive x or 1x, which would work. So if I solve this, that's going to give me 2x plus 3 equals 0. And this is going to give me x minus 1 equals 0. So if I solve, I need to subtract 3 from both sides. That's going to give me 2x equals negative 3, and then I need to divide both sides by 2, so that's going to give me x equals negative 3 halves. On the other factor to see for 0, I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and that gives me x equals 1. So on the next slide, I've just simply got the same thing, it's just my graph, alright? So all I need to do is check and make sure my x-intercepts are at negative 3 halves and 1. So if I look here, I've got between negative 2 and negative 1, that's negative 1.5 1 and 1. So my intercepts are at the same point because negative 3 halves is the same thing as negative 1.5. And my other intercepts at 1. And we're going to work on this some more tomorrow. So watch this and make sure if you have any questions, you'll have them ready for tomorrow in class.